In this example, I have the actual function that I want to differentiate, so I'll be able to take as many data points as I want. And we're going to see here how taking too few data points makes it so our estimate of the derivative is not very good, and if we are able to take more data points, then usually it's going to be better. So the first thing I can put here is I can make my function, which I'll call y. So that's going to be e to the sine of x squared. Just make sure our function works here. Make sure it's able to handle a vector. And it is. And I'm only going to look at this from 0 to 5 seconds, but I could keep going if I wanted to. Right, so I'm going to start by only sampling it every a uh, quarter of a second. This might be too little, so I'll see in a little bit here. So I'm going to take a step size of a quarter of a second until I have five seconds worth of data. And big Y is going to be Y evaluated at T. Right, so I want to plot t versus big y. So again, this is if I, if it was empirical data, I would be sampling every quarter of a second. I'll see what happens as I sample it quicker and quicker. Right, so if we see here, it looks pretty choppy. Put some labels on. And I'll put grid. All right, a quarter of a second looks maybe a little bit too infrequent. I'll start with a tenth of a second here. All right, that looks pretty good. All right, so every tenth of a second I'm taking this sample, and what I want to do is find the derivative based on sampling it every tenth of a second. Now I have a decent amount of data here, and I'll keep getting more and more as that step size decreases. I want to use a fourth order accuracy uh, differentiation here. I'll use central wherever I can, otherwise I'm going to have to use forward or backwards. Alright, so I have to start with going to those uh, coefficient tables. I have to start with my forward differentiation. So if I see, well actually I'll see what are the limits to using central. For fourth order accuracy, I need two steps before the value uh, I want to find the derivative at. So I won't be able to do it at k is one, I won't be able to do it at k is three, I will be able to do it at k is four. So when k is less than four, uh, or I can do it at k is three, sorry, I cannot do it at k is one or k is two, because if I take two steps before that, it'll bring me to zero. But the third step will work. So if k is less than 3, I'm going to be using forward differentiation uh, with an accuracy of 4. And let me pre-allocate this. I'll call it dy. Will be my derivative. That's right, so the kth value of dy using forward differentiation at, with an accuracy of 4 is going to be a negative 25 over 12 times y of k plus 4 times y of k plus 1 minus 3 times y of k plus 2 plus 4 thirds times y of k plus 3 minus 1 fourth times y of k plus 4. And that has to be divided then by my step size, which will be dt, and that can change here. Right, so again, uh, essential differentiation needs two steps before, two steps after. So I have to use backwards differentiation at some point at the end. So when k is greater than the length of y minus 2, uh, then I can no longer use my 
for uh, central differentiation, I'll have to switch to backward differentiation. And that will be an else if. Right, so it's basically the same scheme, I just have to negate everything. And it's going to be k minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, and minus 4. Really nothing else there I have to change. Right, so that's where I have to use backward differentiation when I'm too close to the end of my results, but everywhere else I want to use central differentiation. So looking at my table for a fourth, uh, fourth order accuracy, I'm going to have 1 over 12 times y of k minus 2, minus 2 over 3 times y of k minus 1, plus 2 over 3 times y of k plus 1, minus 1 over 12 times y of k plus 2, and that 2 is going to be divided by dt. And so if I run this, right, it compiled everything, now I just need to plot my results here. Right, so I see here what my results are. The lower graph is now the slope of my upper graph. And we see that it is pretty smooth here. It does have kind of some of these sharp peaks. And that difference is going to come in on how fast I sample it. So this was sampling every tenth of a second. So again, I'll point out I'm using backwards, uh, forwards differentiation for the first two terms, backwards differentiation for the last two terms, central differentiation everywhere. And this is, uh, again, a fourth order uh, I really arbitrarily chose that. I could have used a higher accuracy. If I use a higher accuracy than the more of the first terms and more of the last terms, uh, I have to use forward or backwards for since the central is going to require more and more terms uh, before my point and after my point. So this is good for my fourth order accuracy. So let's see what happens if I sample quicker. So dt is now 0 0.05 seconds. So we see here, uh, it smooths out my y, it smooths out my dy dx, and if I sample even faster, now I get even smoother results here 